Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. So today I am going to be talking all about tape and hair extensions. I love tape and hair extensions. I've been wearing extensions for probably about five years. I have worn, I used to wear clipping extensions, now I wear tape ins. I love my tape ins, they are amazing. This is a um, product that we do offer at the salon, it is tape and hair extensions. Um, well, at least at the salon that I work at. And I, I love them. I love them so much. I don't think I will ever not go without my hair extensions. They are just, uh, they make me who I am. Not really. I, I just love them. They are amazing. They make me feel confident. They make me feel good. And so yeah, so I'm going to hopefully be answering all of your questions that you could have about tape and hair extensions as a professional, as somebody that wears them themselves. Um, and I don't know, let's just, let's get started. Okay, so I'm just going to jump right into it. So one of the things that I've been asked about a lot is, do they damage the hair? And here's my answer to that question. If your stylist is properly trained on how to do tape and hair extension for different hair types, as well as they are educating you on how to properly take care of your extensions at home, no, they will not damage your hair. If your stylist is not properly trained and is not pro properly training you, then absolutely they can damage your hair. So if you are looking to get tape and hair extensions, do your research, find a good stylist who knows what they're doing, who's educated in this, who has been doing it for you know a good amount of time, and I promise you, you will love them. Tape and hair extensions for most brands, not every brand does this. They will come in a pack of 20, meaning you get 20 individual tape and hair extensions. You can also see that I had colored these because <laughs> you can see that they're two different colors there. Um, so they come in 20, 20 individual pieces. And most people get them sandwiched together. And the way that works is it's extension, slice of hair, another extension, and then they get sandwiched together. And that means that if there's 20 pieces in the pack, you get 10 individual sandwiches. So for myself personally, my hair, I have a lot of hair. So I wear three packs of extensions, which is a lot. And um, so I have 30 sandwiches in my hair. Is that right? Yeah, 30 sandwiches in my hair. Um, they can also be applied different ways too um, for people that have really fine hair where their hair can't hold the weight of the, the sandwich. The way it can be applied is in, it can be extension, slice of hair, single sided tape. So that way it's a little less weight on their hair and it won't pull on their hair. And that's why I mentioned before, this is why you want to find somebody who is properly educated on how to do this because if they are not or they don't care and they just apply that sandwich into your hair, it can rip out your hair. So now that I've talked a little bit about how they're applied, the way that they are removed is once they are in the hair and they've grown out for a certain amount of time, we have a, a special little solvent that you spray just at the top of the tape tab. And the way I do it is I usually will hold it, spray it at the top of the tape tab, hold onto the extension, kind of mush it around a little bit, take a um, rat tail comb, stick it in there, pull the extension apart. It's super easy, it's super quick, and this is why tape and extensions are one of my favorites. So next question I get asked about a lot is, you know, the maintenance of the extensions and how often they should be moved up. Um, I'd say anywhere from six to eight weeks, it depends, you can go, some people go a little longer, some people go a little sooner, it just depends on how quickly your hair grows and how much it bothers you once the extensions start to grow out, um, because once they do, they, the ends of the extension will flip out a little bit, so sometimes, you know, especially if your hair is finer, you'll maybe need to come in a little sooner because if those tape tabs flip out, you don't have, have the density, enough density in your hair to really hide the extension. Um, I usually probably go about eight or nine weeks, um, depending. I have gone longer and it was not good. 
but often with our stylist, you know, we usually put ourselves last because we're worried about getting everybody else looking good. Um, so, and it's not easy. I work in a small salon, so to find time in the salon to get them done is not always easy um, because I work with probably three other girls and to find the time, to find time where we both have, you know, maybe a little gap in our book, is it's not, it's not always easy. Okay, so extensions can be used for both length and volume. Um, personally, I wear mine for length. I'll show you guys where my, where my real hair is. This is where my real hair ends, and then down here is where my extensions end. Um, I did used to, these used to be 18, 20 extensions, um, but I was over the extremely long hair and needed a good little chop and I, you know, it's still long, but it's not, you know, they were probably only down here before and I just I couldn't take the length anymore, it was driving me nuts. Um, so, I, like I said, I wear mine for volume, so when you, er, I wear mine for length, so when you need to, when you're wearing them for length, you need to match up the density of your hair with the extensions to make sure that it looks good all the way down and you can't tell that you're wearing extensions. Um, where if you're wearing them for volume, you know, typically most people will get them a length a little bit longer than their real hair and either cut them to about their real hair, maybe like an inch or two longer. Um, so it gives them a little wiggle room for when their hair does grow. And for volume, you probably only need a pack of extensions, um, depending on your hair. But I know for my salon, there are a lot of women that come in and get just a pack for fullness. Um, and it makes a big difference in their hair. And they really, they love them a lot. Um, so I'm, another big question I get asked about, which I left this for one of the last things I want to talk about, was cost. Um, reason being, I wanted to go over a couple things before I talked about cost. Um, so like I said, extensions can be applied many different ways and there is no set price for how much extensions are. Um, it depends on what you're going for. So if you are going for just volume, you know, you're not paying nearly as much as somebody who's going for length because like I said, if somebody's getting one pack for volume and I'm getting three packs of extensions for length, obviously I'm going to be paying more. Um, so price depends on the amount of packs that you need, um, the color, um, so the darker the hair color, the less expensive, the lighter the hair color, the more expensive, um, because the lighter hair does have to go through more of a process to get it that color. So lighter ones are more expensive, as well as length, um, because obviously the longer the hair, the more hair, the more hair on each extension is going to be, and the higher the cost is going to be. So. Well, I know that when I have a girl, if I have not done her hair at all, I've not seen her hair, touched it with my own hands, I cannot give them even a slight price range until I know exactly what I'm going to be working with. Um, so I always have them come in for a consultation. I can see their hair. I can feel the density of their hair. I can show them different lengths of extensions to show them you know, what this length is going to look like, what this length is going to look like on them and then we kind of go from there and um, then I can give them a better price point for our extensions and I can match up their hair with the coloring that we have um, so often if somebody has highlights I'll usually give them two different colors in their extensions um, to make it look as much like their hair as possible you know for me I have one solid color and now I did dye my extensions when I colored my hair as well, so I just put it all over. But if I was just buying fresh new extensions, I would just obviously need one color because my hair is only one color. And then the price of the install as well. You know, I'm not sure about other salons in my area. I know that our price for an install right off the bat is 100 And then when it comes to reinstalls, which is once they grow out and you know you're taking the extensions out, putting the new tape on, moving them back up. We do charge, like I said, uh, $115. Now we're going to talk about maintenance at home. 
This is what I do personally and what I recommend to you know all of my clients. So brushing your extensions is probably one of the biggest things you have to make sure you're doing at home. Um, because when you put the extensions in your hair, so you can see, you can see about how long this tape tap is. So we shed about 80 to 100 hairs a day. So when that tape tap is in there, you're still shedding those hairs, but it is getting stuck in the tape tab. Um, so sometimes what it can kind of look like is this, you know, all those little loose hairs hanging off. And what they can do is they kind of can get tangled in each other and they can get really matted, which makes um, an extension move up extremely difficult to get through. Um, so you want to make sure that you are brushing every day. I typically always use a wet brush on my hair. Well, I always use a wet brush on my hair. The bristles are soft, it doesn't get stuck on my extensions, um, and it doesn't rip out my extensions as well. And I do always carry a, um, a little mini brush in my purse as well. So this is from the brand Hotheads, which is the extensions that we use at our salon. Um, I keep this one, like a little mini one in my purse, because I love it. So if you guys can see, it has two different layers. So it has these um, taller, spikier ones, as well as more bore bristle brushes down here. And what that does is it gets into the extension, as well as smooths the extension with the bore bristle brushes. And you know, you can brush it like normal. I don't, I'm not, you know, ripping through my hair, but I'm also not being super gentle either. Um, you know, I have a lot of people that are like, oh, how gentle do I have to be with my hair? And I'm like, you really, you don't need to be that gentle, but you also don't want to be, you know, ripping at your hair either. You don't want to be doing that even if you didn't have extensions in your hair. Um, so I do. I always carry this one with me, and I brush my hair with my wet brush at home. And, you know, you just want to make sure that you're getting those tape tabs up there. You don't want to just be brushing down here. Um, and then when I sleep at night, you know, I always brush my hair before bed and then I'll either put it in a low ponytail, but I really like to usually always put it in a braid, um, just so it's not getting matted. It keeps the extensions nice and healthy and smooth and, you know, keeps them in their best condition. And then when it comes to washing my hair, I think I've said this before, I wash my hair probably once a week, um, maybe twice at the absolute most, but I really don't like washing my hair that much. Um, and the shampoo and conditioner that I use is the Biolage Shampoo and Conditioner. Um, this is just their Color Lash Shampoo and Conditioner. Um, and the way I do it is I, um, they get put into rows in your head. So I will, you know, shampoo. I don't shampoo like this, because again, that's going to create matting. What I do is I kind of shampoo it down. And then for the back, I, you know, I'll throw my hair back and tilt my head back a little bit so that all my hair is kind of falling like more straight back and I'll put my hands in this way and go in between my rows to make sure that I'm getting all my hair properly cleansed and not just the hair on top. Um, especially because I am a little bit more oily so I know that if I don't get all of it um, it can create some sliding with my extensions so shampooing your hair properly is a, a big deal. I do shampoo my hair twice. Um, you're always supposed to shampoo your hair twice. First to get out all the oil and the buildup and products in there and just stuff in the environment and then the second time actually cleanses the hair and then I'll go in with my conditioner and I will put it from about you know ponytail and down like low ponytail down um, you don't want to put extend or conditioner at your roots it is going to make your extensions slide and you're going to lose extensions that way so I mean you shouldn't be putting conditioner at your roots regardless because it's not good for your hair but um, especially when you have extensions, no conditioner at the roots, none. Um, and then I'll use a mask on my hair maybe about every other time. I do use one from Amika, which I don't have with me. I will link it below. And it, it is really good. I thought it made my extensions really super soft. And then once I get out of the shower, first thing I always spray in a little bit of leave-in conditioner. This is just the Saints and Sinners. Velvet Divine Leave-In Conditioner, um, and I'll kind of spurt that all over. I do do a little bit up at the top because I don't really condition my real hair, um, because honestly my real hair doesn't need it. Even when I didn't wear extensions, all I did was 
I didn't condition my hair at all. I would just spray a little bit of leave-in conditioner because I am so oily. Um, so I do spritz a little bit in just so I can brush through my hair. And then I'll also spray in a little bit of the Amica Wizard, um, which is a really, really great product. That's probably, I know it's a salon, we sell Amica at our salon, and I use that on every single one of my clients. It is so good. It smells so good. It has so many great qualities to that product. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail because it's not really what it's about. And then I also use the Keratin Complex Infusion, which is basically just pure keratin, which is what our hair is made of. So it really is a good product to make the hair super healthy. Um, so that's another great product I always put in. Those are the products I put in when they're wet. I don't do too much. Um, and then I'll blow out my hair. Um, and then if I'm styling my hair, you know, the next day or something, I always use the Sebastian Trillium. Um, you you want to make sure you're using a good heat protectant. Even if your hair, even if you don't have extensions in your hair, you want to make sure you're using a good heat protectant. And the way that you make sure you do that is, you know, you shake it up, spray a little bit on your arm, take your blow dryer, put the blow dryer on your regular skin, not right on it, but blow it on your regular skin, and then blow it over where you put the heat protectant, and then you can feel the difference between the spot that doesn't have heat protectant on it versus the spot that does. And that's how you can tell whether or not you have a good heat protectant. If you can't feel the difference between the two spots, get a new heat protectant. So invest the money in a good heat protectant. Um, so I always spray heat protectant in before I style my hair. And then before I go to bed, I always do run a little bit of the Sebastian dark oil in my hair. Um, just a little bit on the ends of my extensions. Um, because your extensions are, at least for my hair type, which like I said, I have very oily hair. They are a little bit drier than my real hair. Um, so I do put a little bit of that in to make sure that my extensions stay nice and healthy and shiny and beautiful. Um, and I just maybe do a pump of it, maybe two pumps or something, rub it in all throughout my hair. Um, and then my absolute most favorite product in the entire world and I don't know how I would ever live without it, is the Amica Dry Shampoo. This is my all-time favorite dry shampoo. I don't know what I would do without it. Um, the way I use my dry shampoo, um, and it has like saved me from not having to wash my hair every day, because like I said, I'm a little grease ball. So I spray my dry shampoo in at night. And the way dry shampoo works is it, it's not like a hairspray. We can spray it in, wait a few minutes for it to, you know, firm up and dry, and then you're good. Dry, dry shampoo is a product that needs its time to work. So, it's, you're not just going to spray it in and poof, the oil's all gone. So if you spray it at night and let it soak up overnight, I promise you're going to wake up with beautiful hair. I know for myself personally, if I'm going a whole week, I know third day after I wash my hair is when I'm going to start getting oily. So I'll spray it in the night before. And that way I'm eliminating a problem before it's even a problem. Um, and that's about it. That's how I take care of my extensions. Those are hopefully, um, hopefully I answered any questions you guys have about extensions. If you have any more questions, leave them in the comments below and I promise I will answer it. And I will see you guys next week with a new video. Bye.